In an ideal world, you'd have at least five days to explore all that Jordan has to offer. But if you're balling on a PTO budget and want to see Petra, Wadi Rum, and the Dead Sea, here's how we saw Jordan in just three days. Our Jordanian experience technically started when we boarded our Royal Jordanian flight leaving from Chicago O'Hare. The nonstop flight is 11 and a half hours to Queen Aaliyah International Airport in Amman. We did spend the extra points to upgrade to Clowncast so we could be well nourished and rested for our sprint across Jordan. After our on arrival COVID test, we passed through customs and picked up our rental car and we're on our way to Wadi Musa. We opted to make the drive right away rather than spend the night in Amman so we could have an early start to explore Petra. Although it did get a bit dicey towards the end. Google Maps, don't let us down. I'm not going to lie, this looks pretty sketch. We eventually made it safely and checked into the Petra Marriott Hotel. After Lauren almost lost our welcome treats to the floor, we called it a night. Our first full day we spent exploring Petra. We got our coffee for an early morning start. Petra's entrance is about eight minutes from the hotel, so a quick drive to the free public parking area and we are ready to enter the park. So we have a video about our trip to Petra that goes really into detail about all of our tips. So we talk about how to get the Jordan Pass, we talk about our favorite hikes and our favorite photo spots. So we're not gonna really get into the details too much here. However, we'll leave a link in the description below if you wanna check it out. Hiking Petra starts with a walk through the Sick, a slot canyon which opens up to the most famous facade at Petra, the Treasury. Being the most famous, it's also the most crowded here, but there's a lot more to see. So after a few picks, we kept moving towards the second most popular and also much further away and therefore less crowded site, the Monastery. It's about two and a half miles from the point of entry to the base of the Monastery, but the walk is beautiful, filled with caves and the remains of tombs and temples. From the base, it's about 40 minutes of climbing stairs, and we found ourselves second-guessing our decision to decline a ride to the top. Jacket's off, still climbing. Kind of rethinking the, uh, no to the donkey thing. Our climbing was rewarded with a refreshing lemon mint tea with a great view of the monastery and one of the best photo spots in Petra. We then backtracked down the steps, admiring the views along the way down, towards the Al Kabutha Trail, another long set of stairs that promises a view of the treasury from above. I think we're going all the way up here and it's switchbacks the whole way. It should be fun. Once again, our climbing efforts were rewarded with a freshly squeezed juice and a beautiful view, this time of the treasury from above. Then it was another backtrack toward the park entrance and our car. And at this point, we've hiked a little over 12 miles all by 2 p.m. And Lauren started talking to sheep, <laughs> so it was time to get some chicken shawarma. Our lunch was absolutely delicious, and we ate every last french fry before heading back to the Marriott for a nap before dinner. We went to a place with a name that translated to my mom's recipes. The entry was covered in Bedouin rugs, and we couldn't get enough of the oil and zatar or the lemon mint juice, but we managed to save just enough room for the entrees. With full bellies, we set out for something I was super excited about, Petra by night. So we actually got the time wrong and entered late and missed most of the show, but we still loved the experience walking through the candlelit sick with the music in the distance. And everyone was at the show by the treasury. It felt like we had the whole place to ourselves as we were walking in. Treasury lit up at night was beautiful, but we had walked over 17 miles by the time we got back to the hotel. So we resisted the urge for another lemon mint juice and went to sleep. The next morning, we enjoyed a leisurely breakfast at the Marriott, and since we knew we couldn't get lunch today, we put in some work at that breakfast buffet. And then we packed up the car and hit the road. It was two hours down the King's Highway to the Wadi Rum Protected Area. It's mostly a smooth ride, except for the speed bumps. When we arrived, we checked in at the visitor center to show them our Jordan passes, and we were let through to the village. This is where we parked our little compact car because it could take us no further on the sand dunes, and we piled into the back of a truck to begin our desert tour. Headed into the desert. The tour took us to see many of the desert highlights, and you can check out our 24 Hours in Wadi Rum vlog if you want all the details, but overall it was a great day in the desert full of hiking and sights and sand dunes, slot canyons, and rock bridges. The tour all dropped us off in our bags directly off at our campsite. I was obsessed with these crazy Martian domes that I had seen online, so we splurged for a one-night stay at a luxury campsite, and it did not disappoint. The room was so, so nice with the most amazing view, 
and it was super cozy with a heater in the winter desert. The dining dome is basically exactly how you would imagine a dining hall on a Mars colony, and the food was really good considering we were in the middle of the desert. The camp also had a cafe which was open most of the day and late night offering shisha, juice, and coffee. We chose to just enjoy a juice in the cool atmosphere and head home early because we had a very early start planned for the next day. I made a little bit of coffee to try to coax Lauren out of bed so we could start our full last day in Jordan with the sunrise camel ride through the desert. And while we knew it was a sunrise camel door, I don't think either one of us really were prepared to climb onto a massive camel in the dark. The early morning was totally worth it when we got to watch the sunrise over the desert with no one else in sight. Plus, I really bonded with my camel Mishmish, even though he tried to eat my camera. <laughs> After our camel ride, we had a quick breakfast and then we were on our way to our final stop in Jordan, the Dead Sea. We had to pick up some snacks in Aqaba for our four hour drive up the Jordan Valley Highway. We enjoyed the nice scenery and we waved at the goats along the way before checking in to the Marriott Dead Sea Resort and Spa. The hotel just happened to hook us up with an upgrade to a suite and we were ready to take full advantage of all of the amenities. Some of the best amenities of the hotel include the private beach access, lounge chairs, towels, the whole waterfront setup that's included with your stay. Most notable are the cool jelly shoes that are provided which are super helpful on the rocks and a pit of dead sea mud for your own self-applied spa treatment. After two full days of desert hiking, we were in need of a rinse off, and the Dead Sea was the perfect way to relax at the end of our sprint across Jordan. It's also worth saying that floating around in the Dead Sea is way more fun than I thought it would be. I thought we'd just lay there for a couple minutes, say we're good, and then go to dinner, but it was a good hour of fun. To get all the salt off our skin, we headed to the actual spa, and we even visited the coffee shop in our robes and slippers before cleaning up to reflect on our time in Jordan over a delicious dinner. Overall, this was really the best way to end our trip, and it was so relaxing and such a great way to cap off an amazing time in Jordan. Just like that, our time in Jordan came to a close way too soon. If you couldn't tell, we love visiting the country and hope to return to catch all the things that we missed. And if you like this video or you found it useful, please consider subscribing and following along on our next adventure through Italy. Ciao!